So, for some reason, more people end up watching a Wordle Excel video than anything else. Okay, fair enough. So, I thought I'd follow up with what I've done to it since, because this is starting to get really complicated now. Um, so, mostly it all remains the same. The core logic and the game is fine, but I've made a couple of updates and changed it. Um, mostly, I'm now uh, using a lot more named ranges. So, if I select SEQ for sequence here, that number one, two, three, four, five um, now is sequence. It's a sequence of just five letters. So, if I have a look at something here, I've done the mid. Uh, the input text and then the sequence and because I'm now working on 365 it will automatically spill that range to the right rather than needing to put it in as an array formula so this will now really only work on the latest version of Excel so its compatibility is a bit terrible um, uh, I've added in a Rawley um, what's that it's a bin button just to change these numbers that's not that useful uh, to be honest um, well, we can also see what else. Uh, my inputs, I've given that a named range as well. So all I need to do is, if I want to find out how many guesses someone has, I just need to count a inputs, and that will work everywhere. I know I've had five guesses. I'll put the correct one in there. Oop, sorry, diver, not driver. Um, so what else? I clearly, if, you, if you've seen it, I've done what I said at the end of the previous video. I've um, put all the code to actually do the yes, no down here. That hasn't changed from the previous version. I've just referenced the conditional formatting to here. So instead of an if the cell is equal, I've used the where the formula is true and copy pasted that everywhere and updated the numbers to look like the, the, the kind of the online game, the play, updated the formatting to look like the online game a little bit. Uh, put it as capital letters using upper, which is useful. Uh, the thing about doing that is that all of these uh, then suddenly broke when I dragged everything down. Uh, so uh, it was still referencing up here. So I've had to go through all those references and uh, drag it down to the bottom to update it. I should have done that first time around because this makes a bit more sense and if you're here for Excel or spreadsheet stuff, um, this won't be very interesting, but if you do teaching or anything, uh, the fact that these are highlighted reduces kind of the cognitive load on anyone playing the game. I think that's why Wordle has got quite popular. Uh, a lot of the, like the keyboard you tap into it with um, is highlighted. So you know that the letter you're pressing uh, is struck out or confirmed and all the letters at the top here, uh, the previous version I had, you had to make a lot of matching between the word you typed in and just the code, the, whether it was red, green or yellow. But highlighting it here kind of takes that load away, so it makes the game a bit faster to play and a bit easier. Um, so you can focus on the actual solving of the problem, not fighting the interface. Uh, so I think that's, that's kind of really interesting. So it's kind of worth doing if you build something like this to think about that load that you put on people. Anyway, what else? Um, <clears throat> I've altered the code in here a little bit because I'm now trying to find, uh, to not repeat letters. Previously, I was just chaining the letters together and that was producing long strings and was a bit wasteful, but I'm now making sure uh, if it's particularly struck out here and it can't be found up here, uh, add the letter on. If not, ignore it. So this in the previous version would have chained on the same letter again um, but it doesn't now and you might think that's a really easy thing to do you just use an and function to give it two logics uh, if it's in here but not in the above cell no it's not that easy because and doesn't work over arrays it takes well it takes an array and it concatenates it down to just one output where they're all true so you can't check across here and check up here separately so it has to be a nested if statement uh, to do that there's the if here and then this second if and the one for the other one is actually a that's just in fact the one up here is a monster formula now uh doing that if it's yes and then if uh it can't be found here and then if it's also M, oh, it's it's a monster. I can't even remember what that's doing now. And then here I am checking if, 
know, kind of the split of this equals the answer array. So I've named that thing answer array. Uh, so this keeps track of all the letters that are in the right place. This keeps track of the letters that are definitely kind of confirmed. This keeps track of all the letters that are definitely not in there. And then we count them up. And what you might notice is there's a counter at the bottom saying, ah, 700 words are available. Yeah. 2,000 words available. Let's delete that. 5,757. So that's how many words are in my word list on the other page. And then I tried to figure out, can you can you find out how many words are left on your word list? And this could, like, so if you type in tears, it's dropped it down to, oh, 1,300 possible words out of nearly 6,000. So obviously that's a very efficient um, starting point. Try that. Oh, there's 2,500 words left, so that's a less efficient starting point. Hmm, okay. Um, it turns out that's easy and also not easy um, because you have to remember that it's multiple guesses. Uh, let's just think of the final one that you have to go over. So you have to find kind of the max number of these. Oh, it's 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 kind of complicated anyway. But I'm trying to. Um, do three statements. I'm saying, uh, are they in definite positions? Are they confirmed to be somewhere in there? And were they not there at all? Uh, and there's, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact, I did this a few days ago and I've completely forgotten how I actually did it. That uh, formula now makes no sense to me, unfortunately. It's kind of the downside of this being um, Excel code rather than, rather than programming where you can leave comments when you could, you can. You can add comments and comment it, but it's don't. It's not what it's designed to do. Um, and the whole thing is, if all of these are true, keep it as true, count the number of trues, and that roughly gets you um, the number of words left. It's a really weird bit of logic to code in, uh, and it's especially difficult to actually code in logic that says, well, um, we know there's an R in it, but it's not in that position. That's actually, well, it's, it's, that's effort I haven't bothered to go through yet. So this is always a slight overestimate. Uh, and it might go up and down depending on how the double letter problem works, because uh, that might work. Um, so that's where it's up to. We can now start hiding all these. Oh yeah, over here, I've tried to concatenate together. Um, let me just put it put this in. So if um, if the number of answer inputs isn't zero um, and your answer equals the the last answer equals the answer, um, give a, a, a little a code just like what the, the Twitter game does. And if you don't get it, um, let's see. Uh, Oops, if I keep misspelling that one, that's, that's popular, isn't it? There's a starting point. I can keep adding this. Oh no, it's wrong. It concatenates out a slightly different starting point if your answer doesn't match. That's a lot of, oh, that's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I had to copy and paste these squares from somewhere. They only appear black and white, but you copy and paste them into a text box by just making it reference that it appears as the colored version, just like the emoji does. So all that would be left is just to hide the stuff you don't need. Hide that. Uh, you can copy paste that cell somewhere, but there is something about where it adds extra return spaces. Hide that. Uh, hide all of this again. And there we are, it's, it's ready to go again. Um, so we can, oh, it gives me the, the answer at the end, pools. Uh, so probably the only thing to take this next is I know that the, uh, the online game, it's possible answers and it's acceptable inputs are two different lists. The acceptable inputs is a bigger list than possible answers. So the possible answers uh, probably wouldn't include words like that because it's a four letter word with an S on the end. And that's about 
30% of this word list are four letter nouns that are plural. Uh, so you would want to strike those off your possible answers, but not necessarily your inputs. And that would be another bit of coding to do. Uh, so it would reduce this down to maybe, uh, not nearly 6,000, maybe 2,000 words, 3,000 words as possible good answers. But you'd want to then expand the number of acceptable inputs that a player can stick in. And that would be uh, just basically finding two different word lists is the issue there. Uh, that would be fairly easy to swap around. You just have to do your validation in different words because this is the one that does the validating. Here, I'd have to check uh, whether it's not a word or not in the different word list. That would be it. So that's Wordle. It's now getting <laughs> really complicated behind the scenes, but it does a lot more stuff now.